joining us. We'll be getting underway here in just a moment. Uh, my name's David. I'll be your tour guide for the next 60 minutes on this, the Chicago River Architectural. Oh, yeah. A <laughs> couple things about the tour, folks. I'll be highlighting for you Chicago's world-class architecture. And in doing so, we'll travel along the main branch, north branch, and south branch of the Chicago River. Uh, and as we do this, we'll travel through time, so to speak, as we'll explore Chicago's very rich history. Uh, you'll see a lot of old and new, that very stark contrast. You'll find that Chicago literally grew up around these very waterways. The Chicago River has always been a major artery for commerce and development. Uh, formerly predominantly industrial. Uh, we'll talk about the pollution here, the Native Americans who lived in this area. We'll see places where people lived, who built this great city. Now also, too, there's a number of architectural styles that we'll be discussing as we go along. Um, Chicago is, in fact, the birthplace of the modern-day skyscraper, which is to say they use quote-unquote modern building principles, when in 1885, the home insurance building was built, the first time they ever used steel framing in construction. Uh, the style that em emerged at this time in 1885 with the home insurance building was called the Chicago style. Uh, it featured that steel frame. Terracotta was utilized as a fireproofing technique. Uh, as far as the decoration on the exterior, stone. Very ornate and decorative. It has, in fact, a decorative base, followed by what's called stacked flooring, and then it has a very decorative cornice or top. I'll bring you folks all the way into the Beaux Arts style of architecture, popular in the 1920s, uh, borrows from the Greco Roman style. So we'll see more stone, very decorative. Oftentimes, the Chicago style and the Beaux Arts style are combined. So I will call this the Old World style. We'll see a lot of that by Michigan Avenue. That's where a lot of the world's first skyscrapers were built. Uh, the 1920s and 1930s, we see a lot of Art Deco. Also use stone, typically lime, uh, limestone. These buildings feature very strong verticality. They have elegant setbacks on top, which give them a step-like appearance. Often described as being machine-made, they're usually geometric in shape. We'll see a lot of nice Art Deco, in fact. Uh, the 1950s, 60s, 70s folks, when just about all the decoration was taken off of buildings, it's called the International Style. It was founded by a man from Germany named Mies van der Rohe. He said things like, less is more. He believed that form should follow function. We oftentimes will call this the glass box of architecture. Now I'll bring it all the way to present day, the postmodern style, where we see a reintroduction to decoration, uh, historical accents, use of color. Sorry. Uh, we'll see uh, glass, stone, steel, used in very ornate and textured ways. Now, uh, this is not a lecture hall. This is a party boat. <laughs> Please don't feel as though you must hang on every word. I do provide a plethora of information. You never know what folks are interested in, so I try to touch on different things to kind of keep it fresh, keep it fun for you folks. Um, and to that point also, too, if you miss something, you know, because you're getting a drink, uh, using the facilities, or talking to your friends, yucking it up, having a good time, what have you, I'll be dockside as you guys leave. Uh, I'll happily answer any questions you have about the tour, you know, architecture, where to eat, where to party, questions on life. We'll answer for you. Take a look up the left-hand side of the vessel there. That's the Chicago Lock. I'll talk about it in greater detail later. Some nice photographs available here at what's called the Turning Basin. We've got the Marine Safety Center there. Already we see that old and new stark contrast. Smaller, older fireboat, newer, larger fireboat. DuSable Harbor to our immediate left. There's 13 total harbors in Chicago across our 30 miles of lakeshore. 29 beaches. Uh, in these 13 harbors, get this, 6,000 boat slips. That's more boat slips than any city in the world. Uh, and being uh, a Saturday, I believe, you will see a lot of boats out today. Keep your eyes peeled for the ones that are louder and more obnoxious as we'll have a few laughs at their expense. <laughs> the boating culture very much alive here in Chicago. Typically structures are on the right-hand side, folks, as we go along. Sometimes, though, we'll change sides. We'll go to the left-hand side. We'll go upriver or downriver. And sometimes I'll just wing it just to keep it fresh, as I mentioned. If you're a Chicagoan, hopefully I'll wow you with some new information. If you're a visitor, welcome. Uh, pleased to enjoy. We're very fortunate to be able to explore these fantastic structures along the Chicago River. Four double-decker bridges, one of which the Lakeshore Drive Bridge. Old-school Chicagoans call Lakeshore Drive Outer Drive. The young people in Chicago call it LSD. <laughs> I want to take you now to the forward left of the vessel. Beyond the tree line, you'll see a construction crane. To the right of that crane and up, an 82-story tall tower, stone and glass. It is postmodern. A fantastic addition to our skyline in 2009. It's called Aqua, designed by Jeannie Gang. She's a female architect. She won an award for that building. She's the only female architect in the world that's ever built a building of that size. Now, the undulating balconies on Aqua pay tribute to the limestone outcroppings that you'll find in the Great Lakes area, but it also has that water-like effect, right? Uh, some of those balconies go out as far as 13 feet, others as few as 2 feet. Uh, you got the Hotel Radisson Blue, uh, floors 1 to 18. The rest are residences, and boy, is that a cool place to live. Now, left of Aqua, literally beyond the crane now, done in North Carolina granite. North Carolina, what's up? 
Okay. That's the Aeon Center by Edward Durrell Stone with Perkins and Will. Built in the 70s, our third tallest building here in Chicago. It's 1136 feet tall or 80 stories in height. Some nice residences to our immediate left, the Lakeshore East development. These are postmodern, right? See that ornate use of glass, stone, and steel? That curved linear facade? Over to the right, primetime real estate as I call it. This is Riverview 1 and 2 by James DeStefano and Associates. Do walk the promenade here, it's very lovely. 16 four-story townhomes along the water's edge. $60,000 parking spaces, no big deal. Don't worry about that. Wow. Water fountain here, very neat. Actually designed by niece Van Der Rohe's grandson. His name's Dirk Lohan. Uh, the Nicholas J. Mela Centennial Fountain pays tribute to the Water Reclamation District here in Chicago. So you're aware, the right-hand side of the falls represents the Great Lakes Waterways, the mm. St. Lawrence Seaway, Erie Canal, and Atlantic Ocean. Left-hand side of the falls is the Chicago, Illinois, Des Plaines, and Mississippi Rivers, as well as the Gulf of Mexico. You can go play in that water if you want, or stay dry and just go in behind the waterfall for a nice photo. There is some splashing back there, so be mindful of the iPads, cell phones, cameras, etc. Straight ahead of us, folks, downriver, the Donald Trump International Tower and Hotel. I pointed out to you right now so that you can enjoy it from here, as I'll talk about it when we get closer to it. But it's a nice structure. A restaurant there called 16, very lovely, on the 16th floor, as you might imagine. Another bar in there called uh, Rebar. Both are very lovely. Pricey, but good. Now to our left-hand side, a postmodern style structure. This glass and steel triangular shaped building is called the Swiss Hotel. I think I already mentioned that. Harry Weiss designed it. Now, Harry Weiss loves to sail. Uh, all of his buildings feature a nautical theme. In this instance, the triangular shape of the building represents the sail of a ship. And there again are those undulating balconies on aqua to our left. Very cool. Another good view of the Aeon Center available to the left then, uh, there again. Where even residents will hang out, not just those staying at the hotel. Now, 50 yards into the right-hand side, folks, a modern interpretation of Art Deco, built in 1989. This is the NBC5 Tower. Uh, we'll revisit this later as we return, as I'd prefer you all to see the more traditional values of the uh, Art Deco style. This will make more sense. It'll be more enjoyable. It also allows us to uh, utilize our brief window of opportunity to see the John Hancock building there in the clouds. That's a nice pick. Again, we'll come back this direction. I'll point her back out to you. Those black X's on the facade is called cross bracing. It's remarkably strong. Uh, developed by an engineer named Dr. Fosler Khan. Uh, the man who designed the Hancock, though, Bruce Graham, with Skidmore, Owings, and Merrill. It's uh, 100 stories tall, 1,127 feet tall, our fourth tallest here in Chicago, built in 1969, at that time the world's tallest. Now we're approaching DuSable Bridge. Michigan Avenue here in Chicago, folks, marks the original shoreline of Lake Michigan. This is all landfill on your right and left-hand sides. As far north as Lincoln Park, as far south as where you'll find uh, Museum Campus, where the 1933 Century of Progress Fair was held. Now what this means for us is the original shoreline and banks used to exist here. This is also where Chicago's first non-native resident lived. His name was Jean-Baptiste Point du Sable. He lived right to the right-hand side here. There's a bust of du Sable on top of our staircase here. The plaza is basically dedicated to where he set up his fur trading business and his homestead. He was from Haiti, said to be of French and African descent. We do recall or regard him as the father of Chicago. Now to the forward right, beyond the DuSable Bridge, good photo op of one of the more iconic buildings in Chicago, the Wrigley Building. 1924 was built, the first skyscraper ever built on the north bank of the Chicago River. Now it has that Chicago style and that Beaux Arts style. The entire structure has that Greco-Roman feel, stone, very decorative, very ornate. Now the decorative base and the decorative cornice of the Chicago style, now very visible. Six different shades of white glazed terracotta on this structure, designed by Graham Anderson Probst in white. Those shades do get brighter as you go up. You can't get a bad perspective of this building, so check her out as we go by. Um, the clock on top, two stories in height. Some folks call it the wedding cake. Uh, it was, in fact, inspired, though, by the White City, and that was the nickname given to the World's Columbian Exposition of 1893 held here in Chicago, Hyde Park and Jackson Park. We'll talk about that in greater detail. Uh, do walk in between the two towers that comprise the Wrigley. Emerge in this 1.2-acre park, some nice gardens down there. You'll be underneath the aforementioned Donald Trump International Hotel and Tower. 92 stories tall, 1,362 feet. It is Chicago's second tallest building, designed by Adrian Smith, 2009. Uh, this is actually not a steel frame. Uh, this is North America's largest poured reinforced concrete structure. There are 720 million pounds of concrete in the building. The glass and steel on the facade of this building is called a curtain wall. 
Curtain walls are not load-bearing walls. They actually allow you to have floor-to-ceiling windows without sacrificing structural integrity in that they kind of just hang on the side of the building. Uh, Derek Rose, Patrick Kane, they live there at the Trump. I'll let you guys argue amongst yourselves as to who paid more for their unit. Okay, here it is, the international style. Less is more, form follows function. The style founded by Mies van der Rohe. He actually did this building in the 70s. It's called the former IBM building, today called 330 North Wabash. Again, that glass box style of architecture. The only texture are the I-beams that run vertically. This was, in fact, Mies van der Rohe's last commercial building before he passed away, and it's the youngest building in Chicago to be declared a historic landmark. Now, Mies van der Rohe taught here in Chicago at what is today IIT. One of his students was named Bertrand Goldberg, and Goldberg rejected the ideas of the international style, instead arguing, if there are no right angles in nature, there should be no right angles in architecture. A cool example of this philosophy built in the 60s, one of the first residential developments on the Chicago River, Marina City Towers. I used to call them the corn cob buildings. Uh, some folks call them the Chicago tree houses, as the units here are petal shaped, and the elevator core acts as the stem. Uh, pretty rare to have your yacht uh, on the Chicago River. Uh, you do pay a premium, a nice marina down there. You got some restaurants. Those are said to be some of the most photographed buildings in the world. And just about any film done in Chicago will utilize those in some shot at some point. Now, also by Bruce Graham, again, the man who did the John Hancock, to the forward right there where you'll see this uh, boat in the water there. That's the American Bar Association. We call it the ABA, again, by Bruce Graham. Now, this is a modern interpretation of the international style. It's very much a glass box, right? Notice color, though. Uh, blue and green, reflective glass, stainless steel panels that run vertically. Give the structure a little more decoration. Now, if you're interested in law, there is a one-of-a-kind law museum here that the ABA does operate, and it's always fun for us to watch the uh, yachts kind of jockey for position to tie off for a meal. Harkening back to a time when the Chicago River was predominantly industrial and these bridges opened all day, every day, as cargo vessels used to have the right of way. From 1914, one of the few remaining warehouses on the Chicago River, it's called the Reed Murdoch Center, built by a man named George Nimmons. Now it's a Chicago-style warehouse, has a steel frame, terracotta, that decorative base, and cornice, but Nimmons was a student of the prairie style, much like Frank Lloyd Wright. Uh, we don't see any right homes, but the point is those long horizontal lines that we associate with that style, notice them here made of brick and terracotta. Really cool old building, um, a good example of adaptive reuse, uh, old structure, modified for present day purposes. Leaping ahead in time to 2009, another postmodern style structure, it's actually very neat, it features articulated glass and steel uh, by Pickard and Shilton, 300 North LaSalle, 60 stories in height, sits on a half acre park. Cafe 300, lovely. Uh, Chicago cut, very good. Uh, folks, you can't really find a bad steakhouse in Chicago, and I rate steakhouses by how good their seafood is. Talk about that later if you want to. Uh, it's a green building. Lead uh, certification. And I'll tell you what lead means as the soothing sound of the L train will now take over. The L is for elevated, the double-decker Wells Street Bridge, different phases.